Hello and welcome back to the Second Chance Live channel here on YouTube. I'm happy to see that you decided to stop by to watch this video presentation. Thank you. In today's video uh, presentation, I'm going to be sharing part three of an article series that I wrote in August of 2007. I would encourage you to watch part one and part two of this video series in addition to watching part three as each of the parts contain information that I believe you could be benefited by if you are living with a traumatic brain injury and an invisible disability. To read the article, I'll put my glass back on and bring up the article. I want to thank you for your time. You're an important part of my process and I always enjoy our times together both here and on Second Chance to Live. I look forward to hearing from you. Here's the article, My Struggle Living with an Invisible Disability, Part 3. Hi friends and welcome back to Second Chance to Live. I'm happy to see that you decided to stop by to visit with me. In the last two posts I have shared some of my struggles living with an invisible disability. In the spirit of wanting to be helpful, I committed myself to helping a family member move across the country prior to having all the details concerning the move. These are the less, excuse me, these are the events that led to my being in an awkward position. Nevertheless, in the process, I learned some valuable lessons. After the individuals made the decision to move, move I assumed that the trip was going to be made several months sooner than I was, than was in the mind of the mover. First lesson learned. Ask questions and get more information before committing. I said I would help them move across country before I knew how long the total trip was going to take. When I found out that the people I was now committed to moving were planning to take six to seven days to move across the country, I started experiencing some anxiety. The expectation was that I spent eight to nine days helping them move and visit, uh, helping them pack for the move and visiting with them at one location prior to taking the six to seven days to travel across the country to the new destination where they planned to move. The expectation was that once I arrived at the second location that I would spend an additional four to five weeks as I did the math, that would mean I would be away from my home and on the road for seven to eight weeks. As my anxiety increased due to the expectation of time, I attempted to logically share my concerns with the people who I was going to move. I attempted to explain how the damage to my right frontal lobe predisposes me to becoming emotionally and physically fatigued, especially when I had to spend extended periods of time with people. I also sought to help the parties involved understand that when I have to spend extended periods of time with people, I become stressed, fatigued, and anxious. Based on past experience, when I am overly stressed, anxious, or fatigued, my ability to monitor, monitor my interactive skills significantly diminishes. What a non-brain injured person does involuntarily, I have to do or I have to monitor voluntarily. The injury to my right frontal lobe impedes my ability to read subtleties, nonverbal communication, and social nuances. So I have to uh, adapt on a conscious level. As a result of having to work overtime to compensate for the damage to my brain, the filters in my right frontal lobe, I become fatigued and depleted. Practically speaking, as I fatigue, my stress level increases significantly, which in turn leaves me depleted emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. As I become depleted, my ability to interact effectively with people prog progressively diminishes. This is an awareness that I have. Therefore, I have learned to limit the amount of time that I spend interacting with people. Through limiting the amount of time that I spend with people, I am able to relax and enjoy the time I do spend with people. 
Prudence has taught me that when I limit the amount of time of my interactions along with the amount of time I spend during those interactions, I, during those interactions, excuse me, I am able to maintain healthier relationships. Through my awareness, I am able to have or capable of having functional relationships. This is the end of part three of the video series. I want to thank you for your time. Again, I want to encourage you, if you don't watch part one and part two, that you go ahead and do that too. Before I go, let me encourage you with this, something that I need to remember too. Please do not give up on your process of loving God or yourself, because more will be revealed to us in time. The pieces of the puzzle will come together in the correct order and at the right time. I'll say so long for now. Have a great day, and God bless both you and your family. So long now.